Hello, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Welcome to the Cozy Christmas Podcast. My name is Art. There are only 366 days until the next Christmas. <laughs> Just kidding. So to help us get in the right mood today, this most special of all days of the year, uh, I invited on an author. Her name is Amy Pye, and she has just written a new Advent book that was illustrated with some lovely, charming illustrations by her father. And uh, it, it is not just good content in this Advent book that focuses on readings and stories uh, about Jesus, but also uh, the, it's just it's beautifully made. Uh, like I said, the illustrations are absolutely charming and I will probably show it off in an upcoming uh, cozy Christmas book corner video so you can see those but that'll all be happening next uh, next month sometime I hope your Christmas this morning was great I, I hope you have the time to spend with family or friends or loved ones that you call family out of all the uncertainty of these past couple of years, just hold on tight to your family. Cliche alert, they are the best gift that you'll ever be given. All right, enough of the that. Let's get to our interview today. Uh, I, as I said, I invited Amy on. We talk about Christmas, of course, but we also talk about Advent. Uh, we talk a little bit about our faith and what it means to us and, and how that ties into Christmas. So... Uh, I think today, of all days of the year, this one is especially appropriate for our discussion as we uh, talk about the advent of Jesus. I have a special guest on the podcast today. Uh, her name is Amy Boucher Pie, and she has just written a Advent book called "Celebrating Christmas: Embracing Joy Through Art and Reflections." And uh, she's my guest on the podcast today. She's uh, a writer who lives in London, I believe, or in England, anyway. Uh, so, Amy, welcome to the Cozy Christmas Podcast. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me, Art. It's great to be here. Absolutely. I, uh, my wife actually brought this book to my attention. Uh, and she said, I've had some interaction with Amy online through various Facebook groups or something, I guess. And she said, uh, well, that might be a good, a uh, good uh, guest for your show. And I, so yeah, I'm glad you're here. And my wife bought your uh, book this, this Christmas and has been enjoying it. And what I like about it, uh, for folks, uh, can't really see it, but I'll, I'll have some pictures and stuff about later, but, uh, there's, some beautiful artwork in this book as well. And that's done by your father, actually, uh, Leo Boucher. That's right. Yeah. Nice. That's been such a special thing is to be able mm -hmm. to feature my dad's art. He's, um, he's an amateur artist. So this is his first kind of official project. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. he's done a lot of art over his life and he's, he, um, before the pandemic, he was teaching seniors in, in residential homes, uh, for, different ways of art. So it's been, yeah, it's been a massive gift to be able to partner up with my dad and mm. to, to produce 25 reflections and 25 of his pieces of art to, to celebrate Christmas. Yeah. Well, as a, a father, I have a, a daughter uh, who's, she's 12 and we, so she'll sometimes come on the podcast with me and it's always fun to do a, a father daughter project. So uh, th yeah. this was really neat to, to get that. Uh, well, first of all, tell uh, folks a little bit about who you are and, and what you do, and then we'll we'll look at your book. Sure, indeed. Well, as you say, um, I do live. I live in North London, so I am over here in the UK. But people will go, "Oh, she doesn't have an English accent," but that's because I was raised in Minnesota, and then I met my English husband, and the deal was that we would live here for five to seven years, and then we would move back to the land of good plumbing and wide highways, but here we are about 23 years later and God yeah. has had other plans. So I write about all that in my first book called Finding Myself in Britain mm. um, and just the, the adventure that it's been. 
So I'm a writer, I'm um, a retreat leader, a spiritual director, and I write a lot of devotionals. I write for Our Daily Bread and for for other people. And um, I've written another book on prayer that came out this fall as well called Seven Ways to Pray. Mm -hmm. Uh, NAF Press has published that. And then I got to do this wonderful one of Celebrating Christmas, a four-color book with my dad's art and my reflections. So yeah, that's what I do. We like to... uh some years to get like a Advent book or something to read during the Christmas season. And that's what this book is intended for. It's like a, a daily reading that you can read throughout the Christmas season, just to, uh, it encourages us, you know, it, it's uh, encouraging read and, and it's an inspiring read. Uh, and, and I'm grateful for such things that exist because we can get so busy <laughs> at Christmas time that, we, we have to make those moments and to slow down and to uh, make time to remember uh, the, the meaning of Christmas. Definitely. Yeah. It's, I've designed it as you can read it at, from the start of December, one, one uh, reflection a day, or, mm-hmm. you know, you could read it starting on Christmas day and read it through the official 12 days of Christmas. I know that's a bit cu- countercultural now, but mm-hmm. um my husband and I, we've been really trying to observe the 12 days a bit more. And I mean, when the kids were little, we, we, would make, we would make them open their presents over a period of days, but that there's kind of been a rebellion. So we aren't <laughs> able to do that anymore. And we open them all on the first day of Christmas, which is Christmas Day. But mm-hmm. um, we, we do like to celebrate the 12 days and, and up through epiphany of, of just having that spiritual discipline of celebration. So if you haven't had the book yet, don't think that you're too late because you can read it running up to Christmas or you could read it from Christmas day up until whenever you stop observing the holiday (laughs) as it were. Well, good. Uh, Yeah. This, this episode will drop um, pretty close to Christmas, uh, probably Christmas week. So, um, so it's not too late. And we, when we ordered it, it got here pretty quick. So you should be able to get it in time and, uh, enjoy Christmas beyond Christmas day. Th- and that's something um, I didn't really understand about celebrating Christmas beyond Christmas day, you know, in- into the 12 days of Christmas and what that all meant I- until just recently, honestly. And uh, I, and a part of it is my wife's sister and family lived in Spain for a while. And that was a big wow. thing over there. You know, the 12 days of Christmas and epiphany and, and that uh, in some ways that, uh, what is it? January 6th is, yes. is yeah, yes. that's the biggest day of the celebration, at least there. And uh, that was all, this whole new idea that as crazy as things get, it seems like, you know, we run for Christmas. We're so tired <laughs> that, yes. and then suddenly Christmas is over. Uh, but then to take a moment to slow down even after the day itself and continue that reflection, I, I think is uh, it, it's a worthwhile endeavor for sure. Definitely. Yeah. It's, um, I think December is such a crazy time because there's shopping, there's baking, baking Christmas cookies. That's something that I've introduced mm-hmm. over here um, in the UK where they don't really eat Christmas cookies. They eat mince pies and <laughs> Christmas cake and Christmas pudding. So you have to like uh-huh. dr- dried fruit, which I really don't. So I'm like, give me the chocolate cookies. <laughs> um, but <laughs> You know, Advent can be such a busy, busy time. And that's why it feels like a real gift to be able to celebrate. I mean, and yeah, we have to go back to work. So we don't get the 12 days of Christmas off. But mm-hmm. even just that week between Christmas and New Year's, just to be more reflective and restful. And we don't travel. My husband is known as a vicar, which is a Church of England minister. So mm-hmm. he takes that time off. And and it's just a real gift to be able to rest and and to celebrate and enjoy. And as a family, we eat in the dining room. So it's a bit more festive and, and we try to be intentional about, about the spiritual act of celebration. Yeah. Yeah. So what inspired you to write this book? Uh, How did it come to come to pass? Well, it it came to pass because um, my lovely publisher, met me for lunch and she'd been seeing on my website that I'd been posting my dad's art about once a week, Mm -hmm. um, different ways to, you know, take a moment to reflect and, and maybe to pray with the help of one of his paintings. And she said, Oh, I would love to do one of your books with your dad's art. So it was really 
Bible Reading Fellowship here in the UK that had the idea. And, um, and I just jumped at the chance because I thought, oh, my word, can we publish a four color book these days because it's so expensive. And yeah. they, they just did a beautiful job. And my dad was game for it. And, and he was just so wonderful with, you know, doing paintings and having to redo them and tweak them and get them into the style that me and the publisher wanted and mm -hmm. so um you know because with rewriting you just change a few words in your word processor but with paintings he's he had to do quite a few of them uh, more than once so yeah <laughs> so it's and with the with the view of encountering god that's mm -hmm. always my prayer is how can people encounter jesus and how can we prepare so i i really did try to find different ways to really encounter God through the book. Yeah. Right. And, uh, the, and the, each day from what I've been reading so far has uh, a, a story or something that introduces your subject. And I, and I love hearing people tell their Christmas stories or, or just telling their story. It's part of what I do on my podcast is to hear people's stories. And, and so that's, if you love Christmas stories and if you want to hear uh, you know, just those little quick spiritual uplifting stories uh, that have, uh, you know, grounding in scripture. Uh, th this is a great little book to, to put on your shelf. Um, and then the artwork is amazing. I see if I can show at least you this one. Um, oh, yes. The, the stockings of delight. Yeah. You know, the, um, on the third re day's reading, uh, I really like that picture. It's just when I think about a cozy Christmas, you know, that's what I'm imagining. There is uh, <laughs> stockings, yes. a fireplace, a Christmas tree. It's, it's a nice, the, uh, the cover artwork is a, with the silhouette of the wise men. Um, I, yes. I, I love silhouette uh, paintings. I, I have an ornament I sell that is a silhouette of Scrooge that I, that I've ah. painted. And uh, it, 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 I don't know, it just, that's the kind of art I really like for whatever reason. Um, yeah. It catches my attention, I guess, but, uh, but yeah, the, the art in this is beautiful. The writing is, is just very positive and, and refreshing to read. And, and like I said, it'll put your mind on Christmas, which is, I, I feel like these days more and more, we have to be intentional about that and, and very intentional yes. uh, to, to make that time to remember um, why we're celebrating. Yeah, it's about welcoming Jesus into our lives, isn't it? It's yeah. So important. Yeah, yeah, and you know, Christmas is fun, and there's all kinds of fun traditions and things we can do around it. But um, I, I think we we need to have that um, uh, that important part of it too, and not not forget that, especially you know those of us who uh, who believe uh, on on Jesus that you know to forget him <laughs> during the yeah. time of year when we're celebrating him is kind of an irony, I guess, but it happens. <laughs> yes. Yes, um, definitely. So I was going to uh, ask, what are just some ways that we can help keep Christ in our celebration of, of Christmas? Well, I, I do try to give some different ways um, in the book, especially like in that first section, the symbols of Christmas. Um, like the ones, the one that you talked about, the stockings, there's, I came across actually in writing the book, I came across this practice of some people during Advent, they hang a stocking for Jesus. And then either the roommates, the housemates, or the family, whoever's living together, or you could do it probably as a small group. Um, everybody each day tries to do something for Jesus, some kind of spiritual act of giving um, it might be, it might be praying more. It might be not hitting your brother. It might be, um, you know, a practical thing like giving food to a food bank or something like that. And you write down each day what you've done and you put it on a slip of paper and you put it into a stocking for Jesus. And then on Christmas Eve or Christmas day, everybody gathers together and you open up and you read aloud all of those different gifts that people gave to Jesus uh, to celebrate his birth. And I just thought that's just such a wonderful, you know, different thing, easy thing, but mm -hmm. you do have to be intentional, um, a way to, to prepare your heart for Christ's coming. Hmm. We, we've done something like that before uh, uh, with Thanksgiving. Uh, okay. This was uh, some years ago now when our kids were little and it might've been even through Christmas, but 
Um, especially at Thanksgiving, we would write down something we were thankful for that day, put it in a jar, you know, and slowly over the Thanksgiving season, it would fill up. Ah. And especially when, uh, you know, we were in college and poor and all that and <laughs> had yeah. kids, it, 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 you know, it really helps direct your, your attention to, as this is going to sound cliche, but it's going to direct your attention to the things that matter, you, you know, your yes. family, your, those, those things that um, money can't buy, you know, to, to just keep the cliches coming. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, but, but there's, there's truth, truth and that's yeah. why the cliches have come about because there's mm-hmm. definitely truth in that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, and then not even just a few years ago, we started making a, a chain, you know, like they would make uh, paper chains yes. uh, for like to do a Christmas countdown, but we kind of went it in reverse and every day during I think it might have started at Christmas time. We would write down something we were thankful for or something that was a blessing to us. And then we'd make it, add it to the paper chain. And we, st- I remember we started it at Christmas time and then we'd take it down and then we'd put a new one up. But then uh, I just kept going one year and we eventually ran the chain all through the living room, the kitchen, the dining room. It was just all over. It eventually got so long, we're like, okay, we need to take this down or, or something. But uh, that was up for the longest time. And uh, sometimes people, when they visit, they'd be like, what is that? You know, what is this? <laughs> so, That's amazing. That's a great idea because it's such a visual reminder too. Yeah. You know, I think if somebody's crabby, you know, you can just look at it and go, oh yeah, I need to be thankful. <laughs> <laughs> and as you say, it's a great conversation starter too. people who come in and you get to tell them about this project that you're doing as a family. That's a mm-hmm. wonderful idea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's, it was my wife's idea. She comes up with all the great ones. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's lovely. As, as you were preparing this book, did, did you learn anything that uh, you found surprising or anything new that benefited your own uh, spiritual life? Oh, definitely. I always learn when I write. And that's part of the joy of writing. Mm -hmm. Um, Little things like uh, learning that Francis of Assisi was the first to put on a real life nativity play. Mm -hmm. That was interesting because he wanted to introduce the villagers in the in the Italian village where he lived. Um, He really wanted them to enter into the scene. So that was fascinating to learn. And I think when I wrote um, the second and the third sections, I learned a lot. The second is the joys and sorrows of Christmas. So I'm exploring, you know, what about if you're not happy, if things are, have gone wrong, you know, this Mm -hmm. idea of the blue Christmas or the longest night service um, and just exploring how can we have joy in the midst of sorrow and how can we celebrate even if, even if our hearts are hurting. So there's some things that I learned there. The third week was wonderful that the names of Jesus and creator God, can we call Jesus creator? That's some kind of mind bending thought, God with us, light of the world, lamb of God, king of kings, morning star. So I really love learning more about Jesus. And then of course, the nativity story itself, it's timeless truth of God becoming man. And, um, and so there's always something fresh, some fresh bread that God has for us to feast on. Mm-hmm. So I hope that that freshness comes through in the writing and that people will think, oh, there is something, you know, maybe if not new, it might be something that we haven't seen before, but a, a freshness there of God's truth being offered to us. Yeah. And then, I mean, to tell those things and then put it in you know, add it with stories and things. It always makes it more powerful, I think, yes. uh, to, to add that. Um, uh, but, well, I, yeah, I was reading too, and I, I don't think I knew this um, uh, in your book. You had mentioned uh, that it was, was it Martin Luther that kind of popularized the idea of putting lights on a Christmas tree? Uh, and I, you know, back then he used candles and, and I still, and I know they did in England, uh, you know, and the 1800s and all that before electricity. And I, I can't help but wonder if there were any disasters <laughs> burning the tree I down. <laughs> yes, yes. No, I definitely learned that about Martin Luther because I yeah. didn't, I knew that the Germans were really into Christmas trees mm-hmm. and that England got the Christmas trees because of Prince Albert, who was married to Queen Victoria. But yeah, I found that out about, about Martin Luther. What he was doing is he was walking home 
one evening and he was praising God as he looked at these evergreen trees and the way that the stars alighted on them. And so he just got into this amazing time of worshiping God. And so then he came home and he brought a tree, an evergreen tree inside and tried to recreate that wonder, as you mm. say, with candles. Mm. Um, we used to have German au pairs and they, one lovely family where we had two German au pairs, they still, that's how they lit their tree was with candles, you know, yeah. and I'd tell my dad that and he's like, well, you know how um, flammable dead trees are. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, anyway, so I'm sure there must have been some, but my, my lovely German family were very, very careful. and Didn't have any issues as far as I've heard, thankfully. Yeah, I, I mean, I haven't heard any either. And I've done quite a lot of reading of literature and things from that time period. So they must have known what they were doing, but yes. <laughs> can't help but think today we'd, we'd see houses burning down. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah. 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 I don't know. <laughs> so as an American living in England, uh, you kind of mentioned a little bit of it. Um, I'd, I'd be interested to know more of what are some different traditions that you've noticed, you know, around Christmas time that maybe we don't do in the States, uh, but maybe we should do because, you know, they're, they're yeah. meaningful. Yeah, well, another one that I do write about is the Christingle service. And that actually comes out of Moravia or Germany. But it's, um, it's, it's something that really gets kids involved, especially. And it's an orange, which symbolizes the world. And then you have a candle, which symbolizes the, um, the light of Christ. And then you have a red ribbon around the orange, and that's Jesus's blood. And then you have four toothpicks with um, either... Uh, kind of a fruit sweet or raisins, which, which symbolizes the fruit of the earth. And so it's this symbol. And, and we, that's how we as a church kick off Advent. We do it on the first Sunday of Advent and we have our service at four o'clock so that it's all dark. And then you have the lovely image of all of the lights going off and all of the Christingles dotted around the church, you know, symbolizing all these little Christs, as it were, um, you know, the light of Christ inside us. So that's a wonderful thing. Um, Christmas Day is very, very big here. So everything happens on Christmas Day, not so much on Christmas Eve. Whereas my family of origin, we do all of our celebrations on Christmas Eve. So um, that's, you know, and everybody here pretty much has turkey and stuffing and roast potatoes and Brussels sprouts and um and Christmas pudding for dessert, whereas, you know, my family has this strange tradition of homemade chicken noodle soup on Christmas Eve, um, uh -huh. which I think, which actually one of my au pairs said that her, she's heard of because her German Russian family would on feast days have chicken noodle soup. So I'd never heard mm -hmm. how that came about. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's lovely to mix and mingle these different traditions and to see what we like and what we can include. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I was just being reminded of uh, your first um, story about the light and the darkness. And, and you write the story there of, you know, being in, in the church with all the, and the candles start spreading through the church. And I, I've been to a service like that a couple of times. Uh, not all the churches we go to have had like a Christmas Eve service of some kind, but uh, it's really neat to see that. And, one of my favorite parts of Christmas is of course the lights and the decorations uh, that, you know, to me, remind me to be the light um, in a dark world, you know, uh, because of, yes. you know, because of Jesus who came as a light to the world. And that's now how we are supposed to be, you know, that's just to me, it's, that's, that's what that reminds me of. And I think it's a beautiful imagery and of course your dad's picture is really nice on that one too the candle and yes. he painted um, that's another one of my favorites but uh, uh, yeah I, I think that imagery is very powerful for sure here uh, I, I know I, I've got to get going here in a couple minutes yet but uh, okay. I, I do like to ask my guests uh, I wish I could talk longer but uh, this week is already out of out of control so <laughs> but um, I do like to ask my guests to share um, a, a favorite Christmas memory or tradition that they do with their family? 
Okay, a favorite Christmas memory or tradition. I really love how we open our, our presents together and we do make our kids wait. We wait until after the Queen's speech because Queen Elizabeth at three o'clock on Christmas Day always delivers a speech. Of course, it's pre-recorded. But so we listen to that and then and then we were able just to enjoy opening the presents one by one and in a nice, uh, you know, easy, relaxed kind of way. And one by one going around and looking at them and enjoying them. And I do love presents. So that's that's a wonderful way to celebrate for me. Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah, well, that's interesting. So uh, yeah, here, our, our kids, we, we do it in the morning on, on Christmas. Yeah. And some people I know say their kids get them up at like five or six in the morning. And uh, most of the time we have to wake our kids up. Uh, though my daughter, she still wakes up kind of early, but we make okay. her wait because we're, we're mean parents. So, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> but no, uh, that's, that's neat. Um, I was going to ask, uh, your husband is a, a vicar in, in yeah. the church of England. Uh, I, I just wanted to ask, what's that like? Yeah, that's a very broad question. I know, but especially at Christmas time, do you, you, you have a lot going on in your church with that. Yeah. I mean, we're not like some churches where, you know, the vicar is the head of six different churches in the countryside. And so they're going from one church to the other church to the other church. So Nicholas only has, you know, three services. Usually he's got Mm -hmm. what's called the crib service at four o'clock on Christmas Eve. And then we usually host a Christmas Eve dinner, welcoming different people to enjoy the American kind of deal. Um, And then there's a Christmas Eve service at 11 o'clock. And then there's a Christmas day service the next morning. So that's why we were like, we're not doing presents in the midst of all those services. So that's why we wait till after Christmas lunch and after the queen's speech to have kind of the start of our holiday season. So, yeah, so it's a busy time, but it's a really lovely time to be part of people's lives. Yeah. And and just helping them to remember, you know, the meaning for Christmas and and being a part of them, part of it with them is, is fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the couple of times we've had Christmas on a Sunday, you know, we, we tell our kids to wait till after church. And I think that's a lot of fun. You know, you're delaying it. And yes, um, I think it was uh, five or so years ago, we had it again on a Sunday. And so we waited till after church and then we had to wait for grandma and grandpa to show up. And I, th- I thought my kids were going to explode. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. Uh, just watching them squirm. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, but, the good anticipation, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they had we had fun with that. So yeah, that's well, that sounds neat. That sounds neat. Uh well, uh, Amy, thanks for coming on the show today. And oh my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, her book book is called uh, Celebrating Christmas, Embracing Joy Through Art and Reflections, and it's available now. And uh, I'll probably give a, a fuller review of it at, at a later point on the podcast, but Anyway, Amy, thanks for joining me, and I hope that you and your family have a Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Art, and I hope you and yours have a happy Christmas, too. That's how they say it here in the UK. (laughs) Happy Christmas. That's right. Okay, I should (laughs) get it right next time. No, that's fine. I just thought I'd throw (laughs) that in there. No, no, I'm happy to to have a Merry Christmas, too. I haven't lost my roots. Okay, good. (laughs) All right. All right. Thank you, Amy. And thank you all for listening to this podcast. I don't know if today, if you're listening on Christmas or if you are listening on it the day after or a couple days after or next year, maybe it's August. I don't think I'll have any new episodes out this coming week unless something special comes up. Got quite a few things I'm going to have to get to uh, life-wise on starting Monday. So uh, actually starting tomorrow. So that's kind of a, a bummer, but this is why it's fun to celebrate all year. <laughs> you can get those as uh, Todd Killian says on Christmas Clatter, you can catch those little moments of quiet reflection. And uh, I can I can catch those here and there throughout the year. If I don't see you sooner, if I don't talk to you again this year, I will be back on January 3rd with an episode and kind of a, a year wrap up. 
and then I will probably take a couple of weeks off just to uh, decompress, uh, make some plans for this new coming year, and then later on mid to late January, we will be starting season three of a cozy Christmas podcast. And that boggles my mind to say that. That's amazing. I, I, oh, I'm just so excited. I've got so many plans, so many thoughts, so many things I want to do. I hope you're having the best Christmas ever. Eat some Christmas cookies for me. I'm afraid I'm going to have to start dieting tomorrow. So eat a cookie for me if you can. And remember above all to be kind and to do good and that there is nothing in the world so irresistibly contagious as laughter and good humor. Have a very Merry Christmas. And now a message from some of us here at the Christmas Podcast Network. Season's greetings from the Christmas Creeps Podcast. This is Joseph Wade wishing everyone a happy holidays, a merry Christmas, a pleasant life day, and a happy and safe new year. Hello, this is Art from A Cozy Christmas Podcast. And I'm wishing you and yours a very merry Christmas. Well, hello, everybody. This is Todd from Christmas Clatter, and I hope you're having a very Merry Christmas. I hope you're having some great time with your family, friends, your loved ones. Stay healthy and well out there, and may the peace of the holidays be with you. And remember, today and every day, keep Christmas hope alive. Merry Christmas. Hi everyone, Dwayne here, formerly of the Tinsel Tunes podcast and now from the Townsend Lights Facebook page and the Dwayne the Bearded Drummer YouTube channel. I just want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. I wish everyone best for 2022 and I hope that going forward everyone stays happy, stays positive, looks after everyone and as I used to say on the podcast, be excellent to each other and rock on. Hey, Ray, it's Mike from the Snow and Southtown Christmas podcast and the Christmas story band Ralphie's Red Riders. I uh, just wanted to say we've been having a lot of fun podcasting, but also having a lot of fun listening to all the other podcasts. Uh, you guys make Christmas a lot of fun. And so we just want to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And we're looking forward to 2022. See you guys next year. Hey guys, this is Chris Kringle from Kringle Talks Christmas, wishing you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hey everybody, my name is Jeff from the Lost Christmas Podcast, and I absolutely love Christmas. I wanted to say a very merry, merry Christmas to all of you out there, and a happy new year. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season, and merry Christmas, y'all. Hi, this is Kim from Planning for Christmas Podcast, and I just want to wish you all a merry Christmas and a very happy new year. Hello, this is Adam from the Merry Britmas Podcast the podcast that covers all things Christmas from a British perspective. I wanted to wish you all a very happy Christmas and potentially a very happy Boxing Day if you'd like to try out something a bit different and a bit British this Christmas, where the whole of Britain just chills out, eats the leftovers and watches lots of TV and film. So try a British Christmas this year by watching the Royal Family, eating some mince pies and listening to some Slade. Merry Christmas. Hi, this is Ken from The Sounds of Christmas, the station and the podcast. I'm sure I'm not the first to say this to you, but Merry Christmas. Hope you and yours have a wonderful holiday and a terrific 2022. And may you always believe in Santa Claus. Hello, everyone. This is Matt from the TGI podcast. And I just wanted to wish you and yours a very, very Merry Christmas. Hello. This is Lasse Vogt from the It's a 90s Christmas podcast. I, together with Lyle Perez, wish you Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a very Happy New Year. Hi, this is Scott from Holly Jolly Xmasu, your podcast destination for Japanese Christmas music. Wishing everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'm Robin. 
I'm Juno. We're from I'm Not Complaining with Robin and Juno's podcast. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Oi, what are you two doing in here? Get, get away from Nothing. my microphone. Get away from my microphone. Nothing. Clear off, both of you. Clear no. off. That's a lot of some recording. Get out of here. No. Hi, I'm Jack from the Total Christmas Podcast. I want to wish everybody a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. All the best for 2022. Yours sincerely, Jack. P.S. Did I already say Merry Christmas? Oh, yes, I did. Yeah, that was that was the whole thing, wasn't it? That was the main thing. Okay, I'm off now. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Chris from the Christmas Time in the City podcast. Wishing everyone a very Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. This is Mike Westfall from the warming glow of the Advent Calendar House wishing you and everyone you love a Merry Christmas and best wishes for a happier, healthier new year. Hi, this is Tim Babb from the Can't Wait for Christmas podcast wishing you a Christmas filled with family, friends, food, joy, love, movies, music, and a new year filled with all the things you love, especially for those things you love, our Christmas podcasts. Merry Christmas, everybody. This is Sean from the Christmas Podcast Podcast, wishing you a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. I hope 2022 becomes one of the best years you've had in recent history. Merry Christmas, everybody. Stay safe, and I'll see you at the Shispering Pines. Hello, this is Scarlett. And this is Lonnie from the Netflix Miss Podcast. Wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hey, Jerry, is this on? Oh, oh, start. Hello, everybody. This is Manny from Feliz Christmas and Merry Navidad. Wishing everybody listening to this wonderful episode a very Merry Christmas, a Feliz Navidad. And I'm sharing all my blessings and sending all my blessings your way. So for now, Feliz Christmas, Merry Navidad. Hello everyone, I'm Charlene from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I hope you all had the best holiday season spent with family and the people that mean the most to you. Love and Christmas lights, baking and Christmas movies from my family to yours. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I'm Wayne from the Christmas Alphabet Podcast and I want to wish you a very happy Christmas and many, many blessings for 2022 and a happy new year. Hey everyone, I'm Anthony. I'm Julia. And I'm Tom. And we're the elves from Tis the Podcast. And we're here to thank you for making this year a little jollier and a little brighter and to wish you and yours a very... Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Hi, this is Marty from Lit for Christmas, and I'm lifting my glass in a toast to all of you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Amanda and myself. And remember, it's not Christmas without some Christmas spirits. Cheers. Every Monday, everyone, this is Robert from the Behind the Bells podcast, the weekly show that dives into the world of Christmas movies and television specials, wanting to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hello, this is Glenn Warren, the host of the Season's Eatings podcast. As we gather around the table this holiday season, I want to wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas and a happy and safe and prosperous new year. What's up, dudes? This is Jerry D., the host of the Totally Rad Christmas Podcast, the podcast that talks all things Christmas in the 80s. I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Totally Rad New Year. Later, dudes.